today's intro session i think a good chapter for both physics and science as a whole i think is newton's second law this law is useful because it actually links two very important concepts when it comes to physics which is the idea of force and how it relates to motion now before we can delve any deeper let's first do a little revision on what forces are for us like right? so a force for us is we define it as a any push or pull right that's a very general definition of it more importantly mm -hmm. we define it as a vector quantity are you familiar with vector quantities yes all right can you give me like a definition of what vectors mean no i've heard of vector and scalar but mm -hmm. i get confused in all right definition all right that's no issue well it's a good idea that we are going we are actually going to be using vectors in this because force we define as a vector why because it's a quantity that needs both magnitude meaning a number and that and that exactly very good and this makes sense both on paper and even if you think about it conceptually so imagine if i tell you that i am currently applying a force of 10 newtons on an object the first thing you would be inclined to ask could be okay where is this force acting right because just saying applying a quote and quote 10 newton force isn't sufficient information because say this is the box i have you might be picturing a force like this you might be picturing a force like this like this from below from the side anywhere right all of these forces could be 10 newtons right so notice how while their numbers might be the same their magnitudes or sizes might be the same they still all have different directions meaning they all have different effects right a force you're applying to from the left will act differently than the force you're applying from the top right here we just realize that forces need a direction not just a number right yes all right so now that we know this information that forces need magnitude and direction we realize that when we got talk about combining forces and adding forces just adding up their numbers isn't enough why because now you have to cater to the direction as well right because you have such a variety of directions you will need a slightly different form of mathematics to combine forces right so let's see what type of combinations do we do so for simplicity sake we'll be talking about combining forces in one dimension combining forces in one dimension what comes to mind when you think of one dimension one dimension mm -hmm. one angle one side mm -hmm. one side yes that's a very accurate way very good so one side <coughs> so one side means that you are acting your forces along one direction right or along one common side or line right think of it like the number line or the x axis where you have a central zero point all values towards the left towards the right sorry are positive all the four values towards the left are negative right all these numbers lie on the same line therefore we call this one dimension very good so in order to understand comb combinations of forces in one dimension let's take two cases so suppose i have the first case where there is this object we have i am applying a force f1 then you help me by applying a force f2 now do you think that with you helping me applying a force on this object do you think the object will move faster or will it move slower at which side right or left over here you are applying it along the same direction as i am just like this in this direction in this diagram that i made faster faster right very good so would you what would then how do you think you would create a combined resultant forces how would you combine these two by adding them exactly very good so here we see 
that when you have forces that act in the same direction, you will always add up the forces. When you have forces in the same direction, both are acting towards the left, sorry, towards the right, you will add your forces to get the resultant force, right? Now let's take another example. So now, <coughs> sorry, I'm applying the same force F1, but now instead of helping me, you're resisting me by applying a force F2, but in the opposite direction. Now, do you think the object is going to slow down or move faster again? Slow down. Slow down, exactly. So here, then if it's slowing down, how do you think the resultant force is going to look like? Now, how will you combine the two? By subtracting them. Exactly, very good. So I subtract them by writing this. Now, one question. Why did I write F1 minus F2, but not F2 minus F1? What do you think, sir? Because it's like from the first side. Mm, think in terms of this this x axis or the number line. Notice how lines acting or this arrow since it points towards the right, positive values lie there. And arrow when it and when the arrow points to the left, it has negative values. I'm essentially do, doing the same kind of x axis concept over here, where forces that act towards the right. I give them a positive value by convention. And forces that act in the opposite direction or towards the left, I by convention give them negative values. So it makes more sense to combine these two forces as F1 with the positive sign minus F2 with the negative sign being given to F2 and the positive sign being given to F1. Here the case is different. Here it seems as if F2 is the one acting towards the right and F1 is acting towards the left when that's not the case, right? So we want to make sure that our plus and minus signs reflect yeah. the direction. This is something that is important when it comes to forces or combining forces that your plus and minus signs need to reflect directions. Hence why we can't just <coughs> simply add up or subtract numbers the way we do in scalar quantities, right? So here we see that when you have opposite directions or your forces are acting in opposite directions, you combine force, you combine them by subtracting, making sure that the negative sign is always next to that one force, which is in the opposite direction. Is this clear? Yes. All right, great. Now, some, now, now that we've talked about forces, now you may have noticed that we were subtly discussing motion as well, right? In each case, I was always asking you, is the object moving faster or slower, right? So for instance, in yes. this first case, I was saying you, you in fact mentioned that the object is going to move faster. In the second case, you said that it's going to move slower. So see here, we have finally made a link between force and motion. So what link do we see that forces will cause motion to change? This is precisely what we saw, right? And we saw two types of changes in motion currently. We saw first, the first case we saw when the object moves slow faster. And the other was <clears throat> when the object was moving slower, right? We saw both these cases. Yeah. And what caused these two changes in motion to happen? A resultant force. So something that kind of sums up this concept of the resultant force and it the effect it causes on motion is done precisely using the second law of motion given by Newton. So what Newton's second law says that, I'll first write down the statement. <coughs> it states that when a resultant force acts on an object, it 
makes the object accelerate in the direction of the resultant force. And the quantities we see here that are of mind that we must keep in mind are resultant force, acceleration, and conceptually we want to keep in mind the direction of this acceleration in that it acts in the direction of the resultant force. So this is precisely what we've been exhibiting over here in these two cases, right? A resultant force creates acceleration. This <coughs> idea of the object, quote unquote, moving faster or moving slower, that's precisely where we are explicitly talking about acceleration, right? So the formula that links the two is force equals the product of mass and acceleration. M is the mass in kilograms. A is acceleration in meters per second square. And finally, force F is the resultant force. Here I have to keep, I'll have to keep note. It's not just one singular force, force, it is the resultant force. That's hence the subscript R, resultant force in Newton. Now this equation is precisely telling you, or it's reflecting, you can say, both these cases. When your object moves faster and moves slower, meaning if I were to draw a kind of relationship between force and acceleration, I see that there is this direct relation between the two. By direct relation, I simply mean that when you increase the resultant force, meaning there is this additive effect, you will see that acceleration increases. Hence, over here, that's why we saw that when your resultant force had this additive effect, you saw you experienced the object moving faster, right? Meaning your acceleration increased. There is this positive aspect to it. Whereas, <coughs> if your resultant force is decreasing, or it's lesser, you would expect your object to accelerate less, or you would expect the numerical value of acceleration to decrease. So here we see that there is this direct relation between acceleration and resultant force. Is this clear? Yeah.